Good afternoon. It's weird listening to my own citation every time. This must like be like the 500th time I'm hearing it, and I don't still feel good hearing my citation. But I'm very happy to be here. And then I want this to be as interactive as possible. I believe everybody here can make noise. Make some noise if you've had a... Okay. Make some noise if you've heard about Bitcoin. Make some noise if you have Bitcoin. Make some noise if you have one Bitcoin. Ah. Make some noise if you've heard about Ethereum. Make some noise if you own Ethereum. Make some noise if you own one ETH. Make some noise if you've heard about NFTs. Make some noise if you own an NFT. Make some noise if you own your own NFT. Make some noise if somebody has bought your NFT. All right. So this exercise, this exercise is just what is blockchain. I graduated from the Federal University of Technology at Korea. <laughs> Computer Science Department. And then I would say I graduated with a good grade. I don't know exactly what my CGPA was. But I know I was part of the top five that graduated. I did not collect my certificate until after five years of graduating because, because I needed it for an international trip. I used to tell my mother, the certificate is safer with the school than with me. <laughs> and the reason being, I searched for my YA original certificate for eight years before I found it. So I told myself, any other certificate will remain with the institution <laughs> till I really need it. But what if you remember the person that gave you the first 1,000 naira? Is there anybody here? Make some noise if you remember the person that gave you the first 1,000 naira. Good. Make some noise if you remember the first time you ate rice. <laughs> I was having an interesting conversation with a group of friends yesterday, and we were talking about the realities of different people. We all have different realities, and that reality does not make me any better than anybody. But it's just the path that we have chosen in life and the sacrifices we had to make to shape us to build some habits. Unlike a lot of you, I remember the first time I ate Indomie. I remember the first time I ate spaghetti. I remember the first time I had boiled egg on spaghetti. But my cousin cannot even remember the first time she was on a plane. I remember the first time I was on a plane. I kept the receipt for many years <laughs> because it meant a lot to me. And those things shape our reality. Again, I ask, what if you are a prince? Would you live differently? Sure. So what's stopping you from living like a prince? The understanding that you are not a prince puts you in a space where you do not want to live like a prince. And I can go here and tell you that blockchain is a record of transactions on bitcoins and cryptocurrencies network, in the, on computer systems, distributed systems all over the world, in a peer-to-peer -peer network. Make some noise if you learned anything from that. <laughs> Those people are probably in computer science or computer engineering. It makes no sense. And when we say blockchain, it's just like the next buzzword. But blockchain is me actually taking one of you and trying to do a family tree experiment. In Africa, we do not recognize family tree. Tracing down to your great grandfather. And I tell you right now, you are complaining of the popular word supper. If I'm able to trace your bloodline and you find out that your great grandfather is a king or was a king somewhere in Mali, 
even though you might not be in Mali in the next 15 years, it's going to change something in your mentality. And that's what blockchain is. Blockchain is not just the next big thing. Blockchain is a technology that has existed for years. The word smart contracts was formed in 1993, when the word user experience was formed, when the word first video game was created. And smart contracts did not become a buzzword until 2013. Why? The world has not lived up to the reality of understanding that we are actually decentralized. But we have agreed to live as a central system. And until we get into that space where we understand that we are decentralized, by I saying that we are decentralized, is that humans have choice. I can decide to walk off this stage right now, but I have chosen to stay on this stage and finish my talk. You could decide to stay in your room for the next 60 days. The best I would do is knock and beg you to come out. Your agreement to coming out of your room is a contract to my knock. Right? The system of that happening without you having to knock, just thinking that, oh, Victor has been in his room. I want him to come out. Victor knowing that and then coming out to say, Keaton, you asked of me, is what smart contract is. What if you wanted to graduate from FUTA and pursue a master's degree in cybersecurity in Harvard? What if immediately you created that wish and that desire? It is written somewhere in a block, and it has signaled a block in Harvard, and Harvard offered you an opportunity. How would you feel? Just by thinking it. What if you get a system where Ava tells you, or the system tells you, that we understand your desire, you want to pursue a master's degree in Harvard, but that is not what is good for you, really. The reason why you want to pursue a master's degree in Harvard is because of fantasy and too much motivational speaking that you have listened to. You need to be in a lab in MIT, and this is the pathway for getting there. How would you feel? That is the world we are going into. The world where everything is connected, but contracts are being made to allow processes key into one another. Now, what are NFTs? I could give you that long definition you get in classrooms. NFTs are non-fungible tokens. Again, if you don't know what NFTs are, do you understand what NFTs are now? Non-fungible tokens. Makes no sense. NFTs are digital assets. Then what is an asset? Business studies. An asset is anything that makes you money. In simple terms, a liability is anything that takes money from you. That is, what is an asset to me? I could own a car that is an asset because it makes me money. And you own a car that takes money from you, it's a liability. In some strong, economic, uh, in some strong economics and, finance, and, finance, and financial wisdom, the house in which you live in is a liability. The house which you own and you live in is a liability, not an asset. The house which you own which you put up for something else, whatever, there are a billion ways in the real estate market to make money from your house, is an asset. So, I met my co-founder in Futa, in the walkway. What if there was a picture and the video of we meeting, and then I've made it an NFT? Today, when we are leading a lot of product designers across Africa, I'm sure that picture has more value. And then you could buy it. Three weeks ago, I bought an NFT, for 34 matic, which is about 33,000 naira, right? As I am speaking today, the floor price of that NFT that I bought is 1.2 million naira. Yes. Now, if that is the way NFTs are being advertised, and then people have started seeing NFTs as a money flipping system, and that is the first zero ground entry level you want to deal with NFTs at wit. NFTs are assets. If you buy Mona Lisa painting, if you buy Mona Lisa painting, and I wish and pray to walk into your house one day and see paintings like Mona Lisa, people that own these paintings do not want to sell them. Why? The mentality of buying this painting is not to sell. It's the worth. So if you, I did not buy an NFT for 34 Matic so that in three weeks later, I will be 1.2 million naira richer. That was not the reason I bought the NFT. 
I bought the NFT based on the story behind it. And we are all a story, but we just don't care. Why don't we care? Because we do not see ourselves as decentralized systems that has agreed to live centrally. So if you ask me, is blockchain, is NFTs the next big thing? I would say no. I would say you are the next big thing. Thank you.